Hi everyone, welcome to this video where I will answer some common questions regarding chromatic harmonica. Uh, I get a lot of questions regarding this lovely instrument uh, and I thought I'd just kind of, yeah, make a video where I answer some of the questions that I have gotten over the years. First question is, should I play pucker or tongue block and what do you use? Well, the answer is I use both. Uh, pucker or lip pursing is kind of my main embouchure, but the recent years I've also been using a lot of tongue block. And I started playing uh, pucker, um, and that is forming the, the note with your lips. Uh, I started doing that when I started on the chromatic. And I played like that for a long time, but then I heard lots of m beautiful music played on the chromatic where or I knew that the harmonica player was playing tongue blocking. So I thought, wow, I, I really have to learn, learn that as well. Uh, and I, I, um, I, nowadays, I, I mean, as I said, my main embouchure is the pucker, uh, but I, I use the tongue block more and more. And especially tongue blocking if I'm playing, you know, big interval leaps. those kind of octave skips and also playing things where I kind of have to repeat stuff and, and going across many holes like there tongue blocking and corner switch is really really the key for me um, but I'm 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 faster playing pucker <laughs> Uh, I think I have, I have, I'm, yeah, I don't know. And I also, I can kind of articulate better when I play pucker. Because, yeah, I don't know why, maybe that's just me, but you know. Doing da -da -da -da, all those things. Like, all those things that you can do with the tongue. Uh, I, I have I cannot do that when I tongue block, but I know there are people that can do it, but I cannot. So good. So, yeah, my main is pucker, but I also play tongue block. And uh, what should what should you play if you play chromatic? I don't know. Uh, I think you should start with the one that feels most natural, and uh, I mean that feels most com comes most easy to you, and then you should learn that, and then you should look over to the other side, and hmm, maybe I also should learn the other embouchure, because you will benefit so much from knowing how to play both pucker and tongue block, because then you, yeah, you can get so many more different sounds of the instrument. And also it's like playing guitar, should you play guitar with a pick or should you play with your fingers? I think you should play with both. <laughs> I play guitar with both a pick and a finger, because it's a variety in sound and different possibilities and expressions. And then I think, at least when I play, I think that tongue blocking sounds a bit more soft and mellow. I don't know, maybe it's placebo, <laughs> but I think so. If I play like this, pucker, and then, I don't know, let me know what you think, but I think tongue blocking sounds a bit more mellow, and Pucker has a bit more punch. Question number two. What are the most important scales to use when playing jazz? Oh, that's a big question. Uh, but I think the main ones that you should really start with uh, is the major scale, uh, the Dorian scale and the Mixolydian scale. If you know these, you will get very, very far. But actually, the thing is, if you really, really know the major scale, you already know the Dorian scale and the Mixolydian scale. Because in the major scale, there are seven different modes, and each of these modes has a scale. And uh, that's, that's like a system that has been around for hundreds of years. Uh, so if you know the C major scale, you already know the D Dorian and the G Mixolydian. Which is great, and then you can that that applies to all keys. So if you know B flat major scale, you already know C Dorian and also F Mixolydian. So I would recommend really really learn the major scale in all keys, and that will take you very far. 
And then I would recommend the jazz melodic minor scale, which is a minor scale with a natural sixth and natural seventh. So. Same intervals going up and going down, because that is a really good uh, scale and also a good mode, because it contains many other nice stuff. Uh, now I played a C jazz melodic minor scale, and in that scale I also find the F uh, Lydian dominant scale. Which is a super common jazz scale. And in C melodic minor you will also find the altered scale, which is a very common one. And in this case you will find the B altered scale, or I think you call this super locrian as well. Which is a very common sound you might have heard on on dominant and seven and altered chords. And then other fun scales is the diminished scale. Uh, and uh, also the whole tone scale is a great one. I mean, scales is, uh, is another movie, <laughs> but I would recommend really, really learn the major scales in all keys first, and then you can start start working on the on the jazz melo melodic minor scales. All right, question number three: How many harmonicas do you bring to a concert? Uh, I bring pretty many, <laughs> uh, maybe. Uh, this is my chromatic harmonica case. I think it's like a camera case or something, and uh, I open it up, and there I have three chromatics uh, that sit nice and tight in this material and uh, yeah I put them in here so here I have two 16 holes and one 12 hole I bring this case all the time then I often have a an extra 12 hole so I so I have like uh, two 16s and two 12 holes uh, and then I also have uh, my I also always bring my diatonic harmonicas uh, with me, uh, and I have this case uh, that whoop, now it's loose stuff in here. Uh, this is a low E flat harp that was almost escaping. Uh, looks like this, and this is an old case. I think this case is like 15 years old, and it holds 14 diatonics. Uh, so I always bring this one and this one and. Uh, a spare <laughs> and I put that in a backpack and then I go to concerts so it's good to to have a, f a few harmonicas with you because if things happen I mean things can always happen when you play harmonica uh, I mean you might get a stuck valve or something will fall into the harmonica or the slider will get stuck or get get squishy or maybe you will drop your harmonica I have done that just before a concert I dropped it boom on the button so I couldn't, on the button, you know, so yeah, I couldn't play, I, but I had another one. Don't do that. Uh, it was very dark backstage and I was trying to find my way to the stage. Oh man. Uh, but yeah, so I bring a few, uh, around four chromatics and like 14 diatonics to every concert. If you enjoyed this video and would like to study some harmonica with me, I have a Patreon site, uh, it's a membership site where I post uh, video harmonica lessons. There are over 13 hours of harmonica video lessons available right now. And it's patreon.com slash philipjersharmonica. Next question is, should I buy a 12 hole or a 16 hole harmonica? And what do you use? Uh, I use both, uh, but I think if you are a beginner, I would recommend a 12 hole because it's not so many notes and holes to keep track of. Um, and you can play lots of music uh, with with just the C as, a, as your lowest note. I mean, there is tons of music that you can play. And lots of amazing music have uh, are played and is played on the 12 hole. I mean, many amazing 
harmonica players throughout the harmonica history just played 12 hole instruments so yeah uh, and then a 16 hole uh, is also really fun you get more low notes uh, you can play more accompaniment stuff and you also get that nice B you know that's that B is in pretty many pretty many songs actually depending on the key. Uh, but yeah, I would also recommend getting a 16 hole because it's really fun. It's a bigger sound. Uh, and um, yeah, it's, it's difference in sound. That's what it is. And also register, of course, this one has one octave down. And uh, what do I use? Yeah, I use both. I started on 12 hole and then I got a 16 hole a few years later. And nowadays I mainly play 16 holes, actually. Uh, um, I don't know, it has turned out like that. Uh, and I play lots of duo with a guitar player, and then it's nice to have this, beca because then you can play lots of accompaniment as well. Like playing a blues in G, I can play... kind of really play accompaniment on this one in another way that I can do on this one. And if the if I'm playing like with a smaller ensemble like solo, duo, trio, quartet and it's not so loud things then I uh, then I like using a, a 16 hole. Uh, but I also really like using the 12 hole. It has a bit more punch, I think. At least when I play it it's more more like a soprano sax really chung chung <laughs> getting through. Uh, like if I'm playing with a big band or a choir or if a jazz quartet and it's really, you know, loud and mm. nice, then I use a 12 hole because then I will not play those lowest notes anyway. Um, but uh, yeah, and I think they sound a bit different. I mean, the 16 or 12 hole. And this is a big discussion that uh, will always go on. And now these are two different instruments. But I mean, if I play the note A here, Sounds like that. And if I play the same note. For me it sounds a bit different. Now, I mean, these are really different. This is a, a G48 Wood and this is a Suzuki SCX. So it's a bit different reads. Uh, but still, I think this one has more, more kind of a different overtones than the 16 hole. For me, the 16 hole is more, more big and wooly. Like, it's more more even in the sound somehow um, and the, the 12 hole is more has more direction uh, kind of and I think it's because it's I mean the, the cover plates this is smaller and this is bigger <laughs> so here if you play a note this a note uh, the the air travels around in all of this area and if you play the same note on this harmonica the the note and the air <laughs> travels around in this area which is smaller so there should be a difference but I mean, I don't know if I can like blindfold, kind of just say, oh, that was a 16, that was a 12, that must be a 14. But I think I, at least I feel a difference. And that I think is really important. You should always trust your feelings as well. All right, last question for this video. Uh, how to make a soft vibrato on the chromatic? Do you use, do you use throat vibrato? Uh, yes, I do, do use throat vibrato, uh, but mainly in the lower register uh, and in the higher register I use like a, like a tongue uh, vibrato uh, doing this sound uh, and that's moving the tongue uh, like back and forth. Uh, but a soft vibrato is also kind of, you know, personal. What is a soft vibrato compared to an intense? It's 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 different, but um, yeah, a soft vibrato for me would be like this. There, I'm saying like koyoyoyoyoyoyoyoyoyoyoyoyoyoyoyoyoyoyoyoyoyoyoyoyoyoyoyoyoyoyoyoyoyoyoyoyoyoyoyoyoyoyoyoyoyoyoyoyoyoy
Uh, and, and if you compare that to a throat vibrato, it's more like... I cannot make that nice round sound. So in the upper register, I use this, um, this, uh, this tongue vibrato. Like, and then in the lower register, I use I use throat vibrato, uh, like here in this register. But there it gets hard again on the F sharp, so there I kind of just I can almost do there as well. And on that high G, I did just um, just moving my jaw actually. So vibrato is a big subject. That's also another movie. Uh, but um, yeah, it's it can all, also over, it can feel a bit strange coming from if you have played lots of diatonic, and you know played lots of. then you want to move to the chromatic and then you feel that that sound maybe is like too much so just I would just suggest turn it down turn down the the motion and the pulse of your throat vibrato and really work with it try try to play it really really soft like So yeah, and then there is also hand vibrato, uh, which I don't use that so much. Maybe I should. It's a cool sound, but for me, I often play with a microphone, so it doesn't really work to, you know, to to, to do like this <laughs> if the mic is already in here. It's not so. And then there are people that does it great with this hand as well. That's smarter, because then you can use the slider, of course. But I'm not so good at that. Uh, but anyway, yeah, I use kind of like three different vibratos on the chromatic. I use throat vibrato, and I use the tongue, the and then I move my jaw as well when I have to. Like that. So yeah, the chromatic is kind of different in that way, but very inspiring and funny to play all right thanks for checking out this video uh, if you got some ideas and thoughts just write me a question here in the comment section maybe i will make a video on your question as well have fun keep practicing and bye bye